30? Double. $58,642. Oh my God. <laughs> like the cost of a car. <laughs> Couple cars at that. Yeah. I mean, it's... but can you write off all those taxes? My God. Hey guys, this is Aaron. If this is your first time to our channel and you want to learn all there is to know about living in Richmond, Virginia, tap that like button, hit subscribe, and click that little bell so you're notified every time we release a new video. All right, everyone. Hello and welcome back to Living in Richmond for another City versus City. I'm super excited. We're, we're diversifying a little bit. We're, we're stepping across state lines. And I am so excited to have um, Adam Taylor with us from Baltimore, Maryland. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Aaron, it's my pleasure. Um, looking forward to, to doing this and, uh, you know, comparing these cities. Richmond's always a city that that I've loved and uh, actually have family there. So uh, no a smidget about it. Yeah, I didn't fill you in on that yet, but uh, oh, I do. Yeah. A little, little secret there. Well, I <laughs> love Baltimore. Um, uh, that has been since I was a little girl, uh, definitely going to school further up, you know, Northern Virginia. And then even like as my family moved us down a little bit further into Fredericksburg, you know, the big field trips were always to the Baltimore Aquarium. I loved it. And then as an adult, any excuse. Oh, we're going to Baltimore. Awesome. Let's go. So <laughs> good get stuff. to learn a little bit more about the stuff I always want to go see and nobody has time to take me to go see. So oh, we've got yeah. lots going on here. So yeah, very, very it, it'll good. be good to dig into both cities here and things. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So let's get started. So Adam, if you and your family wanted to go to an amusement park, where would you go and about how long would it take you to get there? So I live about 40 minutes kind of outside of the city. So I'm sort okay. of northeast of the city. All right. And, um, but I'll, I'll, everything that I'll tell you will kind of be from the center, center of Baltimore to give you a reference right. points. So personally, I would take my family to Hershey Park. Okay. okay. It was, it's the sweetest place on earth for a reason. It's a great time. The kids love it because if you keep going back over and over and over, if you've ever been yourself, they have these different measuring charts. Like this year, you could be a Twizzler, and then next year, you're a Jolly Rancher, you know, as they grow yeah. in height. And, you, you know, you can kind of uh, see the progression on the rides that open up to them. Uh, now, that's about a 90-minute drive okay. from the center of the city. And it, it takes me about 90 minutes from my home to get there as well. Uh, you've got a few other options, though. You have Dutch Wonderland, which is for little kids under probably 10 years or under it's basically a a how should i say it like uh, focused on little kids and um the rides are a lot gentler and stuff so that's a fun time and that's just across the pennsylvania line in lancaster okay. and then the last one is um six flags uh that's located down towards dc that's probably 40 to 50 minute drive, depending upon traffic. Okay. And what about yourself? I mean, I've, I'm one of my favorites down there is Kings Dominion. Uh, well, you know, it is kind of in our backyard for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kings Dominion from anywhere in the Richmond area, whether you're in the city, whether you're in the suburbs, I mean, it's max 30 minute drive from you right up 95. So it's really nice to have that. Um, so if you feel like doing it, you know, when they always do the things like at, um, at the holidays, like at Halloween and also at like Christmas time where it's like, oh, hey, you want to just sneak on up there. That's kind of nice to have that like right in your backyard. Now, that is where the Richmond advantage is definitely going to come in. I don't know if you get to have that up there is we're lucky that there isn't just like one way into something. You've got some back roads or else you're like <laughs> everyone else has decided to do exactly the same thing on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. Right. You know? Right, right. Um, and then definitely Bush Gardens, um, which would be a little bit further and just going a little further um, east on 64, you know, maybe from Richmond an hour, 20 minutes or something like that. So pretty easy, pretty easy. Um, now, I do they frankly, still have, 
Go ahead. I'm go sorry. Ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry to cut you off. <laughs> Did they still have Water Country? Because I went there yes. probably a couple of years ago, took the kids, and we had yes. a blast there. It was a memorable Absolutely. trip. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, if you're doing if you're doing bush gardens, it would be kind of silly not to go ahead and do water country at the same time, right? And though not an amusement park, um, kind of felt like an amusement park was they have Great Wolf Lodge that's also in Williamsburg, which is really, really nice um, for during the winter months, you know, for our poor one son that was born in, in January. He was always like uh, two weeks after Christmas. And right. he used to tease us and go like, why would you guys have a baby two weeks after Christmas? And it's like, that really wasn't, you know, oh, it was all in the plan, right? Uh. Right, right. But, um, you know, he loved having his birthday, par uh, birthday party at Grey Lodge, you know. And then, of course, for the summer one, you know, they'd be like, oh, okay, let's go to go water country sort of thing. But um, Six Flags, um, is that possibly the old wild world? Was that what it was called? It's right down there, the... DC Beltway, um, sort of like a buoy area. Uh -huh. I've only been once or twice. Uh, and they've revamped it a couple mm -hmm. times, but it, you know, it was great adventure when I was growing up and we right. went there. But right. um, I haven't gone recently. No. I, I, I tend to gravitate towards the north and go to Hershey or, yeah. or uh, Dutch Wonderland with the kids. Now, Definitely. Let me throw this out there too, because there's uh -huh. something, this is big news that just came out last week here in oh. Baltimore and another oh. reason for you to come back. Okay. We got a top golf. Well, in Baltimore just opened last week and, um, the great thing that they did and what Baltimore is doing, like many other cities, these big cities you're seeing, they put all their entertainment stuff together. So meaning like the Baltimore Ravens and Orioles stadiums are adjacent to each other. Mm -hmm. Top golf is right across the street from the Raven stadium and the casino in Baltimore. Smart. So it's all right there, but it's a, it's a big deal here. <clears throat> very, very cool. Yeah. So, um, the news locally has been really pumping it up. I want to get out there and check it out, but I also want the crowds to die down before exactly. I, you know, get to uh, get to venture out there, you know, exactly. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Okay. Adam, if you wanted to go, um, catch a big concert, like your favorite band is coming through, right? Right. Or your favorite performer for, for one, who are you going to go see? And secondly, where would be the place that you would go and how long would it take you to get there? So I would probably go see Florida Georgia line. Okay. Um, it's, I just love their concerts. Uh, they're a lot of fun. I've been to one and was hoping to go to another one, but they weren't a part of the act when I was going to uh, a concert this summer up in Philly, but I would go see Florida Georgia line and I like outdoor concerts. Okay. Okay. Um, and the venue that we have here in the Baltimore area is Meriwether post pavilion. Okay. Now that's in Columbia, Maryland, which is about a 30 minute drive from the center of the city, just south of Baltimore. And uh, the venue is not huge, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's great because you have like the pit standing room only spot. You have some general seating in the amphitheater and it's covered, but open air. Mm. And then you have lawn seating. So you can bring your blankets small chairs or collapsible chairs and it's a great time when the uh, weather is right yeah when it's not mm, <laughs> not so it's much a little challenging not so much if it was winter time and you were going to go catch a concert what do you think would be the most likely place that you would go in baltimore well in baltimore um the baltimore arena is okay. going to be be the spot now I'll be honest with you. It's not the greatest venue to experience a concert at because it's pretty old. Got it. Um, we are in close proximity to DC. So I'd find myself going down to DC or up to Philly in the winter months. Um, locally here on the radio, when concerts do come out, they're advertising more of the DC shows that are coming into town. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. How about in Richmond? I mean, I, do they have a, an outdoor concert venue? We actually have a couple. We oh, actually nice. have a couple. I'd say the one that most people know, well, I'd say there's two kind of neck and neck. Um, actually, a lot of people tend to know about Innsbruck. 
which is just like in one of our office parks, just kind of step back. But um, if you didn't know it was there, you know, you wouldn't know it was there right. if you live locally. But most people are like, oh, yeah, I know Richmond because of the Innsbruck, Innsbruck Pavilion. So, yeah, that's an outdoor one for sure. Um, that's going to be, you know, 20, 30 minutes from people. So, you know, if you like outdoor concerts, definitely check that one out for sure. Um, then, you see I'm taking notes here too. By good, the way. good. See, now you know, and me too. Now, you know, I'm finding out other reasons that I need to go take another trip up to, to Baltimore. Um, we also have the, the Meadow Event Park, which is actually where they do the Virginia State Fair. So they okay. do um, live ones there as well. Um, in fact, Boys to Men was just there recently. And of course, I was out of town and I was like, no, I would have loved that concert. And so would have my husband. That'd be like our, like, you know, our love story. Like we could go do that and like, you right. know, oh, live through all our moments in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. But yeah, just some really good outdoors. And then we have, um, we do have a larger one that's downtown, like, you know, the Dominion Energy Center um, okay. and then lots of smaller ones, like the National, the Broadberry. Those are the ones that kind of like come into town, but um, or come to mind. And then, and then like uh, Browns Island, they have some different things that are out there, but uh yeah, some good options. Usually about you know 20, 30 minutes, depending on where you are. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we have that sort of thing. But um, the Merryweather, that's really, really familiar to me. I wonder if I'm thinking that my very, very first concert, like as, like a preteen. I think I went to see Amy Grant, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Merryweather Post. So yeah, it's probably it's 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 doable. Yeah. Yeah, they bring in all sorts of acts. I mean, it's it's a good time there. That was a hot second. That was a while, just a while ago, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I have just dated myself for sure. Okay. So lots of different options there for sure for either either area. All right. Um, we have several calls from people just like you moving to the Richmond area that want to work with our team. If this is you, we would love to be the real estate team that you choose. Our contact info is right down in the description. Talk to me, Adam, about like your favorite place to visit that's within kind of the your MLS coverage area. And this could be like a personal favorite. It doesn't have to be a neighborhood. Just like where do you like to go and hang out in Baltimore? Well, I'm going to use your term of coverage area okay. uh, and there expand a little bit. We're going to go south and we're going to go down to Maryland's capital of Annapolis. Oh. I was actually down in Annapolis uh, last weekend uh, for my anniversary with my girlfriend. And we went to dinner there. And every time I go to Annapolis, I fall in love with it. You know, the water, the small town, the tight streets, even though parking is sort of a pain in the neck in Annapolis. Mm -hmm. it, you're, you just feel like the city is sort of wrapping its arms around you. Uh, okay. when you're there and we were going in the evening and when you see the mm -hmm. state house lit up um, coming in and if you know annapolis the challenge is there's really only one way in and one way out of annapolis but i love going there being on the water you see a lot of the um uh, you know guys and gals from the naval academy walking the streets in uniform it's 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 a good spot um, and a great place to go for a date, uh, quite honestly. So we hit up the Chart House, which is, okay. uh, you know, just south of mo like the center of Annapolis and the mm -hmm. water views are, are just stunning. Very, very good. Now, did you have to make reservations way in advance to do that or was it pretty easy to get I in? did it about a week in advance. Not bad. Um, no, it's not bad, but we had to eat a little later. But okay. Hey, it, it all worked out. It was a wonderful evening. Nice. Um, yeah, so I would, uh, uh, you know, definitely go there. But, you know, I alluded to this when we were talking about Top Golf down in the uh, city. Mm -hmm. the other spot, I'm a sports fan. I'm a Baltimore sports fan through and through. And I love okay. the O's and the Ravens. So if I can go downtown any, it's to be at the ballpark. Okay. You know, whether it's baseball or football. I just, I just love our sports teams. Got good ones. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing pretty good. You know, the, the Orioles uh, had their best season and uh, since what, I think 2014 or 2016 and the Ravens are doing okay. 
So good. Good. Yeah. How long, how long does it take you to get from Annapolis to, I mean, from Baltimore to Annapolis? About how long would that take? Probably about 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. Bad. It's not bad at all. Um, because most of it is the highway. You're just scooting down the highway pretty good. Gotcha. But from basically door to door from where I was, um, it was about an hour drive. Okay. Not bad at all. No, and it, was, how about it was reasonable. To get to your, um, to get to the stadiums from most places in the Baltimore area, how long is it going to take you to get in town? 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any, anything pretty much outside the Baltimore beltway, mm -hmm. that's what you're going to, going to expect. Whether you're coming from the North, the South, East or West, you're going to be probably a 30 minute drive just to get there. And then parking, believe it or not, in Baltimore City when it's game day is mm -hmm. actually pretty good, uh, mm -hmm. given if you give yourself enough time. Got it. Because you have to think they've built the casino, which has a humongous garage that you can park in. Um, there's all sorts of stuff, side lots where you can get in. So plenty of I've never really run into a parking issue, but. I'm down in the city quite often and I know the city pretty well and I know That's where true. to go. <laughs> That's true. That's true for sure. For sure. Okay. So we know you're, you're definitely your sports fan and uh, definitely going down to eat in Annapolis sort of thing. Well, there's some good, good eating in Baltimore. I mean, you have little Italy, you've got seafood stuff like Jimmy's seafood. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's, that's been a popular one. It's, it's really, really good. So what is your favorite place in, in Little Italy to go to? I've stayed on the outside when we've gone to one of our little trips. We've stayed right on the outside, but because of mm -hmm. limited time, we never got to go in. So I just got to like see it from my hotel room and I was like, oh, I want to go in there. Is there like a place you'd recommend? Oh, gosh. I, uh, is it Palmazano's or Chipparelli's, one of the two? I, okay. I have to, it's, it's been quite some time, Aaron, since I've been there. That's okay. Um, because I tend to favor more of the seafood stuff. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Quite honestly. Do you put Old Bay on everything? A uh, good amount of stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It, it was funny. I'll share a quick personal story. I was over at girlfriend's house and I'm like, hey, where's your Old Bay? She didn't have Old Bay. She's lived in Maryland her whole life and she didn't have Old Bay. <laughs> I'm like, hey, here's your Old Bay. This is a staple. You got to <laughs> have it. And, um, <laughs> I mean, it's got a it's got a bleed into Richmond too. I would think quite oh, a bit definitely. is as well. But we put it not not only on our steamed crab, shrimp. Put it on your corn on the cob. Uh, they're even putting it on popcorn down mm -hmm. at the beach. Oh, so. definitely. And fries. I've seen it fries oh, up in yeah, Philly. Fries. Yeah. Just got back from Philly, and yeah, they were putting on the fries. I was like, oh hey, I, I saw all that. I was like, oh okay, I didn't know you guys knew this. They're like, yes, we're close to Maryland too. Yeah, like, oh, okay. yeah, it's 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 good. It's good stuff. Definitely. Now, what about in Richmond? You know, I've been to some pretty nice places mm -hmm. when I've been to Richmond. Um, I went down, I think I was in corporate training for a job I had a few years back. And you always get the local vibe and, and hey, go here, go there. Yeah. I, I can't remember the restaurants, though. What's a good spot? Oh, it kind of depends on like what floats your boat. Now I'm not actually like everyone in my family loves seafood. I'm actually not a big seafood person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I, but I, I love the, how excited everyone gets about it sort of thing. Um, God, there's so many restaurants and I feel like, um, Richmond for a small of a city in comparison to places that it is an area. Um, it really has kind of put itself on the map as like this little foodie foodie spot and like the micro micro brewery spot of, of the South. Um, so I'd say big ones that most people know would be like, um, let me think, let me think, let me think. Um, Max is on broad is a great one where it's literally right down the street from all of our, our Richmond Broadway. So if you want to go to the Altria and, and catch a show like Max is on Broad to go do um, brunch at is very, very nice. It's very uh, French Parisian, very, very fancy. Yes, you get your chicken and waffles, but it is much fancier than, you know, you're going to Waffle House or something like that, right? right. That would be a big one. Uh, Torrance is another one that's a very big one. Um, then we got like book binders that's right down on the water, like Shaco Bottom. Um 
I'm a big one for the boathouse. They have several different locations. Um, each of them are on the water. Um, I personally love the one that's actually out in Midlothian, which would be uh, south of James. Um, and it's actually located in a very popular neighborhood, very established po popular neighborhood here. So you have to kind of be a local to know it. But I love being out on the Swift Creek Reservoir rather than on the James. It's pretty on the James, but I'm a Burbs girl through and through. Um, so like city city parking, I'm like, oh, you know, I'd rather if it's got a parking lot, I'm there. Um, those are probably some of the like big ones that I think of right off the top. And then you've got your little like um, kind of like this little like little dive place um, that's on the opposite end. That It's called the lily pad. And they always have local okay. music and all the servers are um, just super like, um, I don't know how to, super like cool that like um, VCU artsy vibe cool that like they could put anything on from any Goodwill shop down on Cary Street and look cool. Whereas I'd put it on and I'd look homeless, right? <laughs> so, but they all, it's like, there's obviously like a, Hey, you're hired, you're hired. They're all cool. And there's always like just cool local bands. It's, it is right on the water. Now the view is not beautiful. It's like of all the like industrial stuff, but right. it is on the water. So I don't know. It's kind of fun. I, I, those are kind of the places I like. Um, and then of course you've got like your, um, I guess if you live in Baltimore, probably going to the aquarium isn't exciting to you or even like to the Harbor. I just think about that. It being like so exciting. Um, for us, you know, Maymont, Maymont Park okay. is a definite, um, the botanical gardens. Those are just kind of like the, the big quintessential Richmond things I would say. Yeah. Now is Maymont Park right there on the James river? Yes. Okay. I did the Richmond half marathon and I think it's coming up here at the end of the month, if okay. I'm not mistaken, uh, or the middle of this month, many years ago, uh, I've done it a couple of times. And the finish line was great because it ended right there in the mm -hmm. park. So you're coming down and you see the water down okay. the hill. It's a, it's a real uh, fun finish to that race. So Definitely. Definitely. I'm trying to think, is Baltimore particularly hilly or is it pretty flat? So if we're talking about like right in the city, mm -hmm. it can be hilly. It can okay. be um, very hilly. Now, it's not San Francisco hilly. Right, right. Um, but it's it's a challenging like if you're a runner and we're looking at the races and stuff um you're you're gonna feel it um, yeah uh but it's good because it sort of mixes things up now as as you get closer to the harbor it gets flatter gotcha that makes sense you get close to water yeah definitely for sure oh i forgot one too um that's neat that you got uh running in here i would say that Ending at Maymont is a definite, like, a Richmond thing for sure. But, like, the Jefferson Hotel, that is, that's a landmark for sure. You know, that's yeah. all the different history about that. I think that's all that area. I wish they would put, no, but I like that they keep the historical stuff, but the fact that you're saying all the entertainment stuff in Richmond that are in uh, Baltimore, that they're putting it all together. I kind of right. wish they'd do that for Richmond, too. We're kind of spread out all over the place. You got to yeah. have a car for sure. Yeah, I think, I, uh, like... For example, I went to a concert up in Philly. Philly does a great job with this too. Like if you go there, their basketball arena, the football stadium, the baseball stadium are right together. Then they have all of this like outdoor places to eat and mm -hmm. right off of Interstate 95. And I think you're seeing a resurgence of cities doing that. So yeah. it's good stuff. It's good. It's, good. it's good. It helps. It helps everyone. It brings everyone in the city because everyone likes the all little downtown area things, but you got to have that other stuff that maybe stays open later. That isn't just a bar, you know, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, That's a good, that's a good thing. All right. So let's shift a little bit more and go back into the real estate end of things. Let's talk a little bit about for your area, average prices and price ranges for your area. Just kind of, ballpark well like you I, I have a youtube channel okay yep. uh living in baltimore maryland and a lot of the people that i attract by doing videos just like you're doing here are young professionals moving to the baltimore area now mm -hmm. they're coming either to go to school here okay to start their residency at hopkins um or a lot of times uh, oh, I've got families like seasoned doctors coming mm. into town 
And the majority of them are looking downtown in Baltimore to get a row home. Okay. Typically a row home is like a two bedroom, two bath row home. Um, they're probably 1100 square feet if you're lucky and only all of about 12 to 14 feet wide. But the good thing about the homes is they're very deep. Um, mm. So, uh, you know, pretty narrow, but real deep. And something like that in a community of, say, Canton, Fells Point, um, even Federal Hill. Okay. You're looking at a minimum price point of roughly $250,000. That's sort of like the entry level. Okay. Rent, you're probably looking 2000 to 2200 a month to get a decent spot. It's not bad. It's, it's not terrible, but, um, you know, it's, we're in, a, in an economy with rapid inflation right now. So, right. and we've had great appreciation, 20% year over year here. And I'm right. sure you're probably seeing the same down in Richmond and people are still, uh, buying. And I tell you what, the rental market, believe it or not, has just been on fire, um, mm -hmm. especially here in Baltimore because of the students. They don't, they, they don't want to commit for long periods of time on something. So um, that's your minimum price point. Now, if you spend probably 350 to 400, you're going to get a really sweet spot, dedicated okay. parking down in the city. You're going to get a rooftop deck. You're possibly going to get a third bedroom in the home. Um, you know, that's if you're looking in the city, if you're looking in the suburbs, completely different story. Um, like your typical, I don't know, four bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage, suburb, colonial home is going to be, I would say it probably pushing the 500 mm -hmm. a plus price point now. Last year, I was able to say probably 425, but we've seen a real run up on prices here. For sure. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Now, how's the pricing holding up in Richmond, though, with houses? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that, well, in comparison, and we, and same, same as you guys since 2020, I mean, it has been, um, it has been um, a bit um, crazy. 2020, 2021, I, 2020, I called the tsunami year because it just didn't, it just felt like it just never stopped. 2021, we, 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 you know, we thought that there's no way anything could be um, higher than how it was in 2021. Well, guess what? Then there was 2021. Um, and then into 2022, it has still been extremely hot. Um, we definitely saw or have seen a, a, at least a little bit of a change since about June 1. Uh, here in the Richmond area for sure. And I don't know what you guys are experienced, but all in all for our area, um, average sales price in 2021 was about a 388 in Richmond and the surrounding areas. Right. And for 2022, it's at 450. So we've definitely ticked up. And I know from what it normally was over the years, we were traditionally falling in more traditional markets. I would say 325, 350 was our average. So, I mean, it's, it's gone up substantially. I don't know if we were at a 20%, um, appreciation rate here, but we, we got as high up as 14, which is ridiculous. We know that's not sustainable. Um, but you know, it had been so, um, average, 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 average for so long that I know a lot of people think, oh, the bubble's coming. It's going to burst. It's going to do this. What we're experiencing now is in a bubble it's called, you know, you are driving a hundred miles per hour and you round it around the corner and the state trooper is st sitting there and you slam on your brakes. And so it's going to feel like you're going zero, but really you're going 60 after you were going a hundred for years. You know what I mean? Right. So right. it's, it's kind of the same thing. Um, for our, for people that are coming into the Richmond area, that's so interesting. I don't know why it never even dawned on me about students coming to Hopkins. Duh, Aaron. Ugh. Um, I'd say most people that are coming to the Richmond area, um, though we have our big, we do have also a very big medical teaching school, you know, MCV, VCU, that's a big, big pool into here. And the university is University of Richmond and VCU, MCV are big pools there. Um, 
I would say more than anything, people coming to the Richmond area seem to be relocating from other larger areas that are really looking for a place for that has all of the all of the things, all of the advantages of a, a fairly affluent and diversified area, but where they can really get some more bang, bang for their buck and just like a really nice um, pace of life, getting away from the rat race, but still having all the things and the rat race. The, the baby rat race by them, but all the other rat race is very within an hour's range if they want to, if that makes sense. So a lot of people from Atlanta, I see a lot of people coming now from like Phoenix, which is the most interesting thing in the world. And um, even people like further down South kind of coming up and it's just kind of this mid spot. And then even people from like the Northern Virginia, Maryland area, they're like, Hey, I still want to have that like um, mid Atlantic feel, but just calming it down a little bit, you know? And so I'm like, all right, well, yeah, it's a slower pace. Just yeah. from my own perspective, going down there and seeing my family, it, it's like, okay, this isn't bad at all. You know, this is this is nice, and you're not seeing the traffic like you would here. So, right. I'm trying to think of like, you know, recently, uh, folks that we've helped here have come from California. Um, I've had a lot, believe it or not, a lot of people come up from DC. To Baltimore. Okay. Yes. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and where else are we getting stuff? Uh, I even had somebody, believe it or not, reach out to me from, oh goodness. Oh, a lot of, a lot of, um, India. So, Very you know, interesting. yeah, yeah. Uh, again, going back to the Hopkins thing. So mm -hmm. the doctors are being recruited to come in. Mm -hmm. They don't know much about Baltimore. So they jump on YouTube, Google, mm -hmm. and they find us here. And that's what they're, you know, that's the draw, just like you. It's it's job changes, it's mm -hmm. relocations, um, school. That's what's bringing mm -hmm. people into town. Yeah. And Baltimore, you know, when like the COVID vaccine was being manufactured, they were doing a lot of it here in Baltimore. They have a, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't think of the company's name off the tip of my tongue, but their campus or their offices are right next to the Johns Hopkins Bayview campus. And that's where all the stuff was happening. So like biotech and you have to remember, wow. like you've got a, a large pool of people coming in for that. You have all the stuff in DC. So you yeah. have NSA and, um, Fort Meade, everything that happens there, along with the Pentagon and everything happening in DC. So we see a lot of federal employees coming mm -hmm. in. Too. So that's very interesting. Learn yeah. something every day. It's good but stuff. We, we've been hinting at the traffic and we've been hinting <laughs> at commuting and all the different things. So I think this is let's let's address the elephant in the room for sure. Yeah. Adam, for people, where are most people in? the Baltimore area where you service, where yes. are most of them commuting to and how long of a commute are they going to have? Well, I'm going to give you, I'll give you one, the center point obviously being downtown Baltimore. Yes. Going into the city each and every day, dependent upon where you're coming from can be anywhere from a 35 to 50 minute drive okay. into the city. Assuming you live within probably a 30 uh, mile radius of Baltimore. Right, right. Um, second to that, I would say is probably going to be Towson, okay. which is the, so Baltimore is sort of in the, right here in the center. And then you have mm -hmm. Baltimore County that okay. kind of wraps over top of Baltimore. Towson is the county seat in Baltimore okay. County. So you have all your government buildings for the county locally based right there, courthouses, et cetera. And a lot of folks sort of funnel into uh, Towson. Okay. And it, and that's where like Interstate 83, which runs out of Baltimore up into Pennsylvania and the Baltimore Beltway intersect, mm -hmm. which is why we have a lot of traffic congestion on the northern side of Baltimore there. Got it. So uh, now I think we will both agree that Richmond's hands down going to win on the traffic front. Right. But DC is the worst. <laughs> We Anything all agree there. With DC, run or take public transit, take a train, 
take the stress out of your life because it is not worth fighting each and every day. We are, we all agree there. If you can't <laughs> fly in and out of Richmond, if that is not um, a, a workable for you, your next right. best option is BWI. Literally, yeah. I will outskirt Dulles. I would outskirt um, Reagan. Do they still call it Reagan? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right there on the water. Mm -hmm. All right. I would outskirt all of those, even though they technically are closer to Richmond, go to BWI. That's the easy in and out. We lived overseas when Brent was in the Air Force. That's where we would do our space A's into BWI. So near and dear. Always well, fun. And, and again, let's let's look at the, the, the pros and cons of that too. Right. Because you have to remember BWI is a is a pretty big airport. And the biggest reason being is Southwest Airlines is has a hub at BWI. Right. So pretty much anywhere Southwest goes, you can get on a flight here in Baltimore and get there. Mm -hmm. It's it's really expanded it so much that Southwest built their own terminal. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So the whole A terminal is dedicated to Southwest. Look at you, Southwest, with your yeah, bad right? self. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, definitely traffic commuting is um, is a breeze in Richmond. That's probably one thing I love about right. it the most. Um, for people where they're commuting, it, it, I would say the big major people are going into the city, you know, into VCU, um, MCV, uh, particularly like uh, the dental school is very hot. Um, a lot of people coming from all sorts of different areas there. Um, we do have um, We do have Amazon. We do have Amazon, which is kind of like on the south side of... Chesterfield County is the south side of the river. Um, we do have uh, Fort Lee. Um, those are probably some of our big employers. And, and really, Richmond, I feel like, is a – and then we uh, we do have our um, – the downtown, the like uh, the Federal Reserve. We do have, um, you know, a Federal Reserve there. So those are big pools. And either way, you know, if you have a – I feel like anyone – we're pretty spoiled. Like if you are like – someone's like, I'm not commuting 30 minutes. Like that's ridiculous. Nobody's going to do that. And you're like, you're not? Even if you're, and literally, if you have a 30-minute commute, like you live 30 minutes away. I mean, it's right. like you're clipping along and people are like, no, that's that's ridiculous. I, I'm not going to live in my car. And you're like, okay. <laughs> so sounds good. But I'd say a lot of people are actually remote for a lot of big companies in, in Richmond. So I think that gives, that gives people a lot of um, freedom right there. So commuting, if you don't want to commute, and you're able to work remote, you can live wherever you want, and you don't have specifically like a job in place here, you know, you hate traffic, come to Richmond, you'll love it. There's a million ways to get everywhere. So it yeah, is a good now, thing. I will say though, like, like downtown Richmond, right when you're going past like the VCU campus heading north. Okay, yeah, now it does suck right there. It's, it's like a like a demolition derby going through there because it yes. sort of zigzags yes. as you go out of the city and yes. it's uh it's it's fun <laughs> it, it's it's a lot of fun so yeah, yeah. I, I i'm a big like you know let's go around the city and come in from the back way right let's come in from right. rockets lane you know we'll come in i like to take all my little outside roads and come into the different city and when i absolutely have to be in there it's like i find my first parking spot and if i have to walk all these blocks i don't care that's it. You know, <laughs> where are you parked at? Well, I think it's on the other side of the city, but it doesn't matter. I'm here, right? No, I'm 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 parking yeah. lots and all that. No, I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> Real adventurous. Okay. Let's talk about um property taxes. Um, I would say like like in the city of Baltimore, and then um your most popular counties where you'd okay. be selling, kind of what would you say? Oh, let's say kind of like average, you know, your tax rates and kind of like average assessment, how it, how it equates to like what the selling values would be. Right. Yeah. So in Baltimore city naturally is where you're going to find your highest property tax rates. And oh, by the way, it's not just the highest property tax rates. It's also highest insurance rates as well. So huh. when we're dealing with people too, the cost to insure your car in Baltimore city, if you have an address in Baltimore city, is sky high. Really? Okay. In addition to that, homeowner's insurance premiums are pretty high. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's the way it is, hmm. but, uh, as far as taxes go, 
Baltimore City, again, is the highest. Uh, water bills in Baltimore City, believe it or not, are obnoxious. And they've <laughs> had a lot of issues with it uh, since COVID. And misreadings, people getting water bills with thousands of dollars in charges oh, yeah. on it. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. it's it's a challenge. Um, now, if we're looking at like, like assessed value versus... I don't know, market value right now. Like I'll take my own home, for example. There you go. Okay. So right now in this market, I could probably, and I'm in a small rancher. Okay. Nothing okay. extravagant, very simple. It'll probably, it probably sell for 400,000 right okay. now. Now the county, I live in Harford County. They're assessing me at 243,000. Okay. Right now. So that's what 60, you know, percent or so roughly mm -hmm. of, um, of the market value and property taxes for me, probably 23, 2,400 a year. It's not bad it's not at all. It's not terrible at all. It's I not mean, it's not, all. now you take this same ratio here down to Baltimore city and I'm probably going to be paying 5,500. Yep. Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah. So um, now the highest priced areas, I think that's where we want to go. Sure. Harford County is sort of towards the northeast side of Baltimore. Okay. You have Baltimore County that surrounds Baltimore City that we spoke of. And then you mm -hmm. have uh, Howard County, which is where Meriwether Post Pavilion is okay. in Columbia. Mm -hmm. And then you have Anne Arundel County, which are both south of the city. Those areas are a little bit more and that's where you're going to find the higher price point homes. Um, okay. especially Howard County and in Anne Arundel County, you know, if you get anything on the water, uh, yeah. it's, it's going to be extremely pricey there. Yep. Uh, what I can, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I can imagine though, like what's, you know, price points in Richmond, I, I would look at the stuff that I would see when I would go down there and I'm like, holy cow, I can, that house north would cost $200,000 more than what you're paying for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a little strange. Sometimes I'm like, geez, do I not live in a nice place? And I'm like, no, I live in a really great place actually. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say city, um, for us, uh, the city is definitely of Richmond is going to be for tax rate is going to be the most expensive for sure. And I think the like easiest way to look at it would be is if I'm looking at a house that's about, let's say, 550000 that's in the city of Richmond, like, you know, your taxes are probably going to be about, from your assessment about, you know, let's say about 5200 right? Whereas if you were looking at a house that was about 550, say maybe in the Midlothian, you know, Chesterfield County area, where instead of like being, you know, which are still high, you know, 92 cents for every hundred dollars assessed, you know, you're probably going to drop your taxes down more like, you know, right at about, what is it about? That's awful. I just looked at it a moment ago to make it easy for myself, you know, right at about 4,000. So, you know, it's about a thousand dollars less. Right. For about the same thing. Um, definitely in the city, you are going to pay for certain areas. You are going to pay a premium for being there. Um, you know, particularly when you are looking in places like, you know, uh, Chimborazo, Churchill, the Fan, the Museum District, which are very, very popular. Um, you're going to get a lot less for your money than if you took your money and took it out into like even uh, certain parts of very, you know, um, West End of Henrico, very popular. Right. Same thing with certain parts of Chesterfield, the Midlothian area. You take the money into those areas, it's going to go a lot further even in the very exclusive spots for sure. But yeah, I would say that you can, you really um, probably in comparison though, for what you would pay in the very um, bougie areas of Richmond and even the near West end um, in comparison to some things up into like Baltimore and Howard County, I, I, even on the river, I can already tell by some of the things you had sent to me, you get a whole lot more house in the Richmond area. Oh yeah. Hands down. You definitely do. And I'm sure the, the taxes are, are going to be less cumbersome as well. So 
I guess it always just has to do with the opportunities and what what works for you. Maybe Richmond and the job market, though there's a lot of opportunities, it might not be what you need. Whereas you definitely are in the hub of things in Richmond, that's for sure. I mean, in, in Baltimore, yeah. so, for sure. All that right. Is it. All right. All right. All right. It's contest time. All right. Well, we are going to grab our phones and we are going to talk about, because we've been kind of hinting at a little bit. Let's go ahead. Adam, I want you to pull up your favorite one or two properties kind of in the 500 to 550 price point in okay. your MLS area that you sell. And I want you to tell us about them. All right. Give me one second here. You're going to put me on the spot here. All right. Let's, I'm going to go with what I know best. I'm going to go right. with my backyard. Okay. Right. So I've got here, here's a home and, and I'm, I'm just under the 550 price point by a hundred bucks. Okay? okay. So the address is 717. I think it's Athlone. I'm not sure more Athlone. A-T-H-L-O-N-E Drive in Bel Air, Maryland. Matter of fact, okay. this house is all of half a mile from me, if that. Okay. And what I wanted to do was pick out a four-bedroom home, two-and-a-half bath, two-car garage. Mm -hmm. And that's what this home is, okay? Now, as I'm pulling, you know, looking at the photos here, I mean, the home is, is great. It's beautiful. They've gone ahead and redone some things. They've got new luxury vinyl plank flooring going on. They've got wooden staircase throughout the home. It's a brick front home with a wood burning fireplace. I mean, this thing, somebody's put some time, some effort into the home. Now, what I was talking to you about earlier was I want to give it to you from two different avatars. Yes. Because you have different dynamics of people that are moving. Yes. We all want to, everyone's moving for essentially job, school, or family. Yep. Those are the biggies. Or in some cases here, I had a lady come up from Alabama who was moving here to be close to Hopkins so she could seek treatment for um, uh, an issue, a health issue that she has. Right, right. And it was like cheaper to buy a house here than it was to come back and forth on flights all the time. So, Hey, sort of makes sense. But so the avatar, like for a family, they're going to want to be in good schools. Sure. So this home actually puts them in one of the best school districts here in the entire County. And furthermore, in, in the entire state. Okay. And that's why you're paying that price point sort of near that 550 range mm -hmm. for uh, this particular home here. Now they've gone ahead and they've, They've done some nice upgrades to it. Like I was saying, they've got a uh, nice renovated uh, bathroom that I'm looking at here. So this is a good family home. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, another home that I, I sort of want to highlight with you, because it, it's really tough for me to send you only I one know. without looking at another that I was, this was a tie for first. It's sort of like mm -hmm. college football right now where you have this massive log jam <laughs> at the top for number one. But that address is 312. And of course, I'm going to butcher this street name, but Teka, or I'm just going to spell it T-E-C-U-M-S-E-H way. Tekashumi, or I don't know. This is in Haverty Grace, Maryland. Now, Haverty Grace is a small little cool, quaint town in Harford County, right on the Susquehanna River. It's beautiful. Mm. And the water views um, are, are incredible. And the Susquehanna actually feeds directly down into the Chesapeake Bay. Okay. So you're really at the top of the Chesapeake Bay okay. here. Now, this community is in an exclusive community called Bully Rock. Okay. Now, Bully Rock, in some people's ears may be ringing, um, is famous for its golf course. Okay. There's a golf course that was on the LPGA Tour for years, and it, by far and away, is the best golf course in northeastern part of Maryland. Okay. Okay. Now, this home, it's 
it's in the community. You've got, let's see here, you've got four bedrooms, three full baths, and an additional half bath, almost 2,500 square feet, and um, two car garage. And the way they've gone ahead and set this up is it has like a nice loft when you go in, mm. um, or I should say on the upper level when you come right. in, or you have sort of this like upstairs family room area, and then the bedrooms sort of branch out from there. Uh, nice, nice size kitchen, open floor plan. I mean, it works, but the real beauty with Bully Rock is it's sort of carefree living, mm. meaning they take care of all your exterior maintenance on the home. That is nice. Now, mind you, you are paying for this, by the way. Of course. It does not come, it does not come <laughs> with you just buying the house. You're paying a hefty sure. HOA fee of like $350 a month. Sure. But if um, you look at the listing photos that I send you, mm -hmm. and uh, this is actually a listing of a friend of mine's, you can see you've got access to the beautiful clubhouse for the community. It is a gated community mm. um, to get into. Now they've got beautiful swimming pools, tennis courts, a fitness facility that will match any gym that's out there. It is it's fantastic. Right. Now, with that said, though, between the taxes of Harford County, the mm -hmm. taxes of the town of Havde Grace, along with the big HOA fee that you have to pay, it really narrows that avatar, that person that can afford the, that property down tremendously. Got it. But, you know, this home is priced at $539.9 right now. Okay. But, um, it's such a, such a great spot to live. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to go down to the city because we could, <laughs> I could go into too many different directions here. That's okay. But yeah. That's we'll okay. stay in my backyard for right now. That's good. Uh, what about down in Richmond? All right. So if we were like the 500 to 550, again, it's very difficult to, to pick out one, you know, I liked it that you're like, hey, let's do two. So we have two different, I'm like, I, I like that. I like that idea. So I went with, um, which was actually kind of cool, going out to the Burbs as well as one in the city. And ironically enough, both of them are newer homes. And that, okay. that usually isn't the case. If you're going for something in the city, it typically isn't going to be new. Um, if you're getting all the all the things that you want, plus the area or location. So the first one, um, it is in um, a very popular na uh, neighborhood in the kind of Mosley, uh, Midlothian area, Chesterfield. It's at 5918 Trail Ride Drive. And it was built in uh, 2021, actually. So it's a nearly new home. It has all of the things that people like that, you know, all the very, the craftsman touches. Uh, but this one is, it's, it's four bedrooms, three full baths. It's nearly 3000 square feet. You've got a decent sized lot. And when you see all the pictures, it just has all the pretty things. Um, the nice high ceilings, the beautiful board and batten, um, the beautiful bathrooms, a nice size backyard. Um, nice spacing between the neighbors, all the amenities right there, and really in the middle of all the things you need, like schools, right? Great schools right up the way, uh, parks and 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 um, playgrounds all right there, pools, tennis courts, and then, you know, down the street from all the grocery stores and all the big box and the little things you want. So the burbs through and through, super cute, really pretty, quintessential, like, um, you know, hardy plank siding and a newer house for sure. Really pretty, something that like everyone for the most part is going to like. Good bang for your buck. Yeah, taxes are right at at like four thousand a year. And again, that's at four. That's at five forty nine nine. Okay. Okay, so it compares similar to, to the first similar. one. I, similar, similar, yeah. similar. Yeah, I, now, like, I you, like the uh, the craftsman style. That, that's, oh, be it's, it's it's really beautiful. Really I love it. Really, really pretty. And everyone yeah. can go, oh, this is going to be like everyone's going to be like, you know, a couple of years from now they'll be like, that was built then, that was built then. I, I guess you'll you'll never know. You'll never know until you get there. Like, whereas we know that we can, anything was built in the t early two thousands. Like, you and I can like spot it. Like, you don't even <laughs> tell me what that year. You know, we know. And you're like, it wasn't necessarily the prettiest time. We thought they were beautiful, but. 
you know, whatever. Oh boy. All the people yeah. with jacuzzi tubs in their homes. Their big, we all wanted them. And for our big old giant <laughs> TV, you know, the, the alcove thing over top the fireplace. Oh you know, boy. Now we just build all the brackets to bring our flat screen out, you know, but it's all good. It's all good. The other one though is it's right in the city, like right in Chimborazo. So Churchill area, which is prime, prime spot. You are literally like, if you have a car, if you don't have a car, it doesn't matter. You know, you can walk, bike, public transit, everything at your fingertips. Literally, like you can just roll out of the house and you've got everything right there. Awesome <laughs> restaurants, parks, nightlife, um, wineries, breweries, all of the stuff. And, and, and probably could go right to your job too. But it's right in Chimborazo. And this one is at 539, 950. The coolest thing is this was actually built in 2019. This is the second time that it's being uh, sold. And you might go, well, it was complete one of those, like that they gutted it and put it all back up. Actually, no, it was brand new in 2019. It was just this vacant lot that was right in Chimborazo and Churchill, which there are not many of them. Like most, it was one of those, I think, where they had like a double lot and they never like built on it. So they just squeezed a little house right in there. But still it's, I mean, it's 3,100 square feet. Wow. It has a completely finished basement. And I love this. This is the coolest thing is most of those cool houses that are downtown, it's like your washer dryer is going to be in the creepy basement. You know, like the, like, you know, if you've ever, you know, seen Hostel, I can uh -huh. deal with attics, basements, creepy basements. <laughs> mm -mm. People are like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, mm -mm, we're not going down there. It's not because of bugs or snakes or like that. It's, it's I've seen basement. hostel too many times. Uh -uh. I'm not going down that creepy basement. So this one does not have a creepy basement, which is good. They actually raised the ceiling or they were smart and like raised the ceiling some and it's nice and bright and all completely finished. And your washer dryer actually on the main level, which I love. You know, no creepy basement. Um, you do not have a garage here, but you do have three designated parking spots plus a detached building for like your like shed kind of garage, you know, so off street parking off the like little alleys. And again, you have just got everything right there. Get all the like cool things about being downtown with all the pretty, pretty high ceilings without it being an older house. So you nice, the beautiful kitchens with the granite or quartz, the beautiful bathrooms and not just one and a half bathroom, which you normally would get down there, even if you were spending like, yeah. you know, five something doesn't matter. You're like, oh, you got one and a half bathrooms. You're lucky you got it. You're lucky if you have a parking space. Don't be greedy. So by comparison, 539.9 compared to that other one at 549.5, you know, your taxes are at about 5,200. So you definitely step up yeah. to be in the city, but you are in the middle and the hub of everything. So kind of two different avatars there too. It's interesting. You, you bring up the fact of, you know, the property taxes, the difference, and naturally we're going to see something similar, but as we're talking here, I'm thinking, and I don't know if Richmond has something similar, but in Baltimore city, if mm -hmm. you go in and you rehab one of these homes, yes. they give you a massive tax credit. It's called the CHAP mm -hmm. tax credit. And your property taxes go down to like next to nothing. Now that lasts only a short period of time for a few years. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get reassessed and you're going to have to pay the current rate. But when homes are marketed in the city that have been renovated, they're going to mm -hmm. say, hey, one year left on your CHAP, three years left on the CHAP. Okay. And mm -hmm. that means that there's significant property tax savings. Does Richmond have anything similar? They do have that. Um, they're in its, its certain zones that they're looking to revitalize. Right. So we're noticing definitely certain parts of uh, North side and other spots that have like, um, try to remember which ones they do have. Uh, it's more than anything though. They um, it's like they freeze your taxes at what your assessment is when most of these investors are buying it, where the assessment's going to be really low because they need to be completely revamped. So it's like they freeze your assessment at that amount for X mm. amount of time. Um, we're definitely seeing certain areas where that was very popular that they were revitalizing. Um, oh my God. What was it called? Homestead tax credit. That, That's what we call it here. Some, it's something like that. They that, that limit they, the increase on yes, the property they, taxes. They freeze it for a certain mm -hmm. amount of time and then it yeah. would go. I don't remember if they like do it incrementally like that, but yes, it definitely encouraged people to come in to revitalize neighborhoods. I feel like they're phasing it out because a lot of the areas that were like up and coming and they wanted to encourage that they they're here. 
So I think they're like, okay, sounds good. You have, everybody has utilized this to the umpteenth. But yes, that was definitely something that would that would encourage them. I don't know if they do the same thing in your area. I know they've done it here for sure. I mean, I've watched in Chesterfield County, my assessment from when we bought our house in 2016, um, our assessment on our house has gone up um, at least 100,000. Oh, yeah. I mean, like a lot. What I've noticed, though, in Virginia, they are they are they are wonderful at doing this in the counties. Um, is they'll like instead of like bringing down your assessment, they'll say, "Oh well, we'll we'll lessen the assess rate, the assess rate." Like so, if you're normally like ninety seven cents for a hundred assess, we're going to put you at ninety two cents. So now this is us helping you out. This is going to make the difference between you being able to go to Bora Bora for a week and not. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you so much. You made. <laughs> So, yeah, that's kind of what we say. You know, you're going to pay it one way or another, right? A hundred percent. They're going to, they're going to say they're giving you a discount by discounting the rate, yet they're, they're going to assess you even more, which makes you think your home value is going up, which it probably is. It is. But, but hey, we all know taxes never go on sale. You know, they're always going to no. go up. <laughs> I no. mean, it, it's just a fact of life. Exactly. It, it's going to happen. Exactly. So. If you're selling your house, you like it that your assessment's higher, right? Mm -hmm. If you're if you're buying a house, you're like, damn, it, don't go up, you know, sort of thing. So, <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> if you own the house, yeah, don't go. Up. But again, it's it is either here or there. All right, let's get back to this. Let's talk about these are always the fun ones. Tell us about the most oh, goodness, well, the most expensive home in your MLS area. Go ahead, Adam, and tell us about it. All right, I will. I, I went ahead and I pulled one up here, but here's a cool thing that I do each and every day. I, I do a different segment on my Facebook page. So you all can check it out. It's, you know, facebook.com, the little uh, relentless home group. But I go in there and I highlight a home, different, different homes for different days. So Mar hmm. Mondays, Markdown Monday, Tuesdays, Townhome Tuesday. Today was Waterfront Wednesday. So on Fridays, I do Freedom Friday. And the premise behind it is if you hit Powerball tonight or Mega Millions tonight, sure. what home could you get? And last week I did the most expensive home in Maryland. And it was, I think it was like 20 million or something obnoxious. And it wasn't down in DC. Um, it was actually over on the Eastern shore of Maryland, ah. which sort of surprised me uh, quite honestly. But the home, I'm going to give you one today that is beautiful. Um, and it's located in Anne Arundel County. The address is 938 Old County Road in Severna Park. Now this home has 12,895 finished square feet, all above grade. That doesn't include any basements with a list price of 15,900,000, six beds, eight baths, eight full baths and three half baths. So when you look at the pictures here, this Everyone's thing gonna is drool. a palace, okay? With beautiful water water views on the Severn River. Mm -hmm. um, the yard is meticulously landscaped and um, it doesn't come with the two dogs that are pictured in here, unfortunately. What the hell? But, <laughs> I mean, hey, if you're going to pay 16 million for a house, you got to throw the dogs in with the with the thing. Right. Um, but like an eight car garage, I mean, it is just massive and done to the nines. Um, chef's kitchen, this library in the home. I mean, as I'm scrolling through the pictures here, it's it's breathtaking to look at. Uh, I mean, hey, who the golfers out there are going to love this? They've gone ahead and put a golf simulator in the home so you can play around the golf in your garage if you really wanted to you've got your theater room your billiards room you have your own wine cellar oh but of your course own gym sauna i mean it is it's it's all there um how long has that house been on the market i'm curious so like this particular home and i believe it's got a guest house too um, oh how cool uh, 148 days. So almost we're getting near that six month mark, but yeah, it, it is, it's beautiful. And, um, like 
if you go back through, look at the Friday videos that I've done, it's, <laughs> it's fun to, to imagine and do the videos uh, like this, to look at these beautiful homes. Freedom Friday, if you hit the Powerball. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. That's what I call it. You know? I like it. I yeah, like it for yeah. sure. I do a thing with my with my past clients in here where we talk about where they ended up buying a house and why. And then it was, and I'll ask them if, if you could move anywhere in the Richmond area mm -hmm. and money was no object, where would you move and why? And it's so funny how people are like, well, you know, but, and I'm like, no, money is no object. So you literally could be like, you could have your, 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 your weekend home out in the burbs or something like that. And then you're like, your your palace or what have you in the the schmoozy little area right off of monument they're like okay yeah that's what i want to do and i'm like okay sounds good so to that end um can i add one thing before yes we go? please please let's let's do a little drum roll and play a little game here what okay. do we think we're, we're, we're doing all this stuff with taxes and we obviously know maryland's taxes <laughs> oh, are God. very high okay what okay. do you think the tax bill is on this place like a wild guess all right, so it's it's fifteen million is what it is. Fifteen point nine million. It's okay, assessed okay. at almost five point six million. Oh my God, well, the taxes are going to be. I mean, are they like thirty? Double, fifty eight thousand six hundred and forty two dollars. Oh my God. <laughs> like the cost of a car <laughs> couple cars at that yeah i mean but it's... can you write off all those taxes my god could you imagine though like i mean this no. is this is uh this is impressive but yeah fifty eight thousand dollars in property taxes yeah well for much less, <laughs> for much less, but still lots of things like what he's described, perhaps not as palace-like, but a different, this has a very, what does this make me think of? This makes me think of like um, something that you would see like in the hills of California, just with oh. the backdrop of Virginia. So it's not all brown, it's all green, and it is overlooking... Uh, the Tuckahoe Creek plus the James River. And it looks like like a Beverly, uh, I don't know, like the Hills sort backyard too with the pool. Oh, wow. So this one is a mere $2.9 million, right? It is 4,000 square feet, five bedrooms, five pool baths, um, absolutely beautifully renovated. I'm not usually one who goes towards a contemporary but I do love these that have almost, it's almost like it melts into nature. It's like, even though it's white on the outside, there's something about it that just kind of melts into the backdrop, into the yard. And there's lots of windows and the curvature of things. And they've, uh, they've completely renovated and made it very sleek and modern in the uh, kitchen. All the bathrooms have been completely renovated. Just when you see all the different things and the yard is absolutely breathtaking same thing like real manicured like yours and overlooking the water and again for it's not the most expensive one but it was it was the most unique and right smack in the middle of um the city but with all of your property as well and being right on the water which i think is pretty amazing um it has a you know basement four and a half baths like i said okay and it's it's just like a little bit over an acre all right so I want you to guess in comparison what uh -huh. the taxes are in this house. It is assessed at one point four million. I'm gonna go seventeen. You're a cheater. Did you look at it? No, I'm not looking. No, at you're it well. you're right on. Oh yeah, Holy like seventeen cow. six. That's pretty good. Okay. So what was the address of the home? Uh, the address is one one seven. Tempsford Lane. T E N S. Um, T um, S and then F O R D. Tempsford Lane in West Hampton, and that is in Richmond. And is Got it, it two point just shy of three million? And there were a couple of them that were very pretty. 
There are some more expensive ones that definitely come up that are in our MLS that it tends to be out kind of like Northern Neck, like Kilmarnock, um, Lancaster, all the different ones that are out there on the river. Um, I wanted to focus more on things that were like a little closer in that are actually Richmond rather than, and I think there was a like one for 10 million that's more Charlottesville, which isn't my, that's not. That's not Charlottesville's a quite, quite a ways away right, right. where you are. Yeah. That's not my selling area. Neither is the Northern Neck, so mm -hmm. that's silly. They just they stick them in here because they know people are going to be looking at them sort of thing. But yeah, so yeah, two very amazing properties, very different. But maybe one is like if you hit the like, you know, the little baby jackpot, <laughs> you know, this is like, you know, okay, this is like this, the baby jackpot. And then you've got the, the Powerball, like you hit it or you right, get that right. big inheritance. Then you go out. To Adam's place for sure. All yeah, right. that, the Severna Park. I, I sold a property down there the earlier part of the year, and it's just beautiful down there. Um, the only drawback, and let's paint the drawbacks here. Yes, yes. The drawback of living in Severna Park is the airport is very close by, so you oh. will have to deal with airport. Uh, depending upon the the way the planes are flying, you're gonna have to deal with airport noise. Gotcha. So. Um, Buyer beware, right? Buyer beware. Now, is it BWI or is it a private? Yeah. No, it's oh, okay, BWI. Okay, okay. It's the international yeah. one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. So you'll be out there mowing your grass and you got a big, gigantic Southwest jet flying right over your head. So. Well, the advantages are, you know, all the dignitaries that you're flying in, it's easy for them to get to your house, right? <laughs> right. Yep. It's a short commute. That's for sure. There you go. Very, very short commute. So I know we've been on, you've been so great. And if you've got a little bit more time, Adam, I would love to kind of talk a little bit about, um, you know, this is this is a first for living in Richmond that we've stepped outside of Richmond to talk to someone in a larger uh, city in a different state. So Maryland obviously borders Virginia. Let's maybe talk about a couple things that a uh, comparing and contrasting if someone's going, hmm, uh, Virginia versus Maryland, what might be the better spot for us? Maybe talk to us a little bit about when you move to Maryland, um, what are maybe some things that are like you have to do when you live in Maryland having to do with your car? Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do that. Easy so, and, and and this is the first for my living in Baltimore, Maryland yes. channel. So uh, I actually have videos on all of this on, on my channel. Oh, that good, you all can good. Go and, and check I don't, out. but I've been thinking about it because people keep on asking me. So I'm like, well, let's talk about it. Yeah, so, so that's a big thing. <laughs> like I... Our state motto should be, uh, welcome to Maryland. How can we tax you? Um, <laughs> and, and that's what we do. Heck, we tax the rain here in Maryland. Uh, we love you so much. So you are going to have to, for your vehicle, you brought up your vehicle within, I believe it's 30 days of moving mm -hmm. here. Right. You, know, you need to go get a new driver's license. It's probably going to cost you $75. You need to go uh, register your car here in Maryland. Uh, oh, before you register your car, you have to go get your car inspected. That's yes. going to cost you about 200 safety inspection. And then you need to go and get it tagged. And that's going to cost you quite a bit of money because they're going to hit you with some sort of assessed value on the car and your tag fee. So the tag fee is roughly about $225. But depending upon the taxes and the type of vehicle you're tagging, that can really uh, elevate that number for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, uh, not a fun process to go through. They've sort of streamlined it when, when COVID was going on, you had to make appointments online. Right. And it was, it was, um, pretty, pretty bad. Um, here in Bel Air where I'm at, it's, um, we have an MVA, which is our motor vehicle administration office building right here. And, uh, it, they run it pretty efficiently. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they're all scattered all throughout the state um, and can get in there. But you've got to do that. Um, I'm just thinking of other things besides the vehicle that you've got to do. What do you have to do annually? Once you do all like your initial stuff in Maryland, like what mm -hmm. is it like you're required to do annually? Once you're like, okay, you just know you got to do this every year having to do with your car. Nothing annually per se. You have no. semi-annually. You have to okay. get what they okay. call an emissions inspection. There you go. Okay. And that's every two years. Um, they've, they've simplified it. Um, oh, that's good. 
which, which is great because right in the parking lot of the MBAs, they have a little kiosk and you go in there and you pull out the little cord and you scan your registration and you hook it into like the um, underneath your dash. And it does all the readings to make sure your car's not blowing smog into the area or into the air right there. And that'll cost you $10, $15. It's not too okay. bad. Mm -hmm. But every two years, you have to renew your tags. So you're paying, I think it's like $127 to $130 every two years to get a first sticker, guys. Look, it's a sticker about like a stamp yeah. size yeah. Um, for your tags. You probably also want to get, if you don't have, um, if you're coming from someplace like, you know, West Colorado, you know, wherever, an easy pass for the yes. toll because yeah. everywhere you drive here in Maryland, we've got tolls. We've got uh, the Harbor Tunnel, the Fort McHenry Tunnel. We've got the Key Bridge. We've had the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Oh my gosh. If you hate bridges, don't come to Maryland. <laughs> if you have them everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Um, I despise, and like you talked about going around the city to find a parking spot, mm -hmm. I will go around that Bay bridge. Yeah. No, it's just not something that I like to mess with, uh, no. because it's a couple hundred feet in the air. And this is where big shipping containers, barges yeah. go through. So it's very nerve wracking. Uh, those would be the things as far as getting around town. Um, if you're looking in the city you really want to find a place with parking, uh, yeah. dedicated parking, because parking is the biggest problem um, in Baltimore City. Most of it, if you're in the areas that I service, is free, but it's street parking. So right now, mm -hmm. you know, we're wrapping up our work day here and everyone's competing for a parking spot. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get in early to get something, or you might be driving around the block for 20 minutes to find a place. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Now, Richmond's got something similar, right? Don't, don't you have, or I should and, say Virginia, right? In Virginia, in Virginia sort yeah. of thing. So mm -hmm. um, very similar. Um, and and this, is, this is also what I wanted to talk about it because when you've lived in a state for so long, even if you've lived, us as realtors, we tend to move a lot, right? Right, right. We've lived in a lot of areas, but if you've been in a state for so long, even though you're so used to telling all these different things to people, a lot of times you forget about, these simple things they're like oh hey i gotta go do it. and you're like oh yeah duh and you're like mm -hmm. oh yeah you're from a different state you wouldn't necessarily know that um definitely you come to virginia same thing you've got to go register your car um well, you gotta you know go get your change your driver's license to virginia license you know if, if you've got your car registered with somewhere else that's fine just make sure you're you're following all the rules we have a dmv in in the department of motor vehicles in virginia and there's lots of jokes around it um Everybody just loves DMV so much. That is mm -hmm. total sarcasm right there. They are getting better about certain ones are better than others, much like you've described yours, that there's some that are very efficiently right. run. You know, if you've brought your entire, um, your, you know, if you have your birth certificate, if you have your shoe size, if you have the most obscure document you ever would possibly need with you at all times, then maybe you'll only have to go to DMV twice to accomplish a very simple thing. But if you don't, you're going to be back again, right? You are going to have to get your new driver's license. Yeah, same thing. It's going to cost you everything. You're going to be taxed on your car. Um, I'd like to tell people that, you know, there definitely is personal property tax in Virginia. Um, if you fall into certain categories, um, you may have some exemptions on things. For instance, if perhaps if you are, um, there's some exemptions for the elderly. There are some exemptions for people that have certain disabilities. There are certain exemptions for people that are, um, you know, some military or, um, you know, surviving spouses, that there are some different things there. But let's say you have two fairly normal cars, like my family does, anticipate that you're going to be paying personal property taxes on your car of about $1,700 a year. I mean, it's about what it's going to run. You two have to get your um, car, um, you have to do the registration either annually or, or semi-annually. Um, you're going to have to do that regularly, little stickers on your, on your, on your <laughs> plates for sure. Um, I, I was I, I went completely electric back in 2017. So because I'm not paying for gas at the pump, which we get taxed on Virginia, they've decided that I need to pay a road tax. So all of my registrations are about double what our other car is. But you know, hey, you know, it's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it take it how it goes. Um, we do have a an annual inspection for your car, about thirty dollars. 
Um, we do not, in our particular area, have admissions. Now, if you are in Northern Virginia, closer to D.C. and Maryland, you do have to do the admissions. But in the Richmond area, no admissions, just the regular um, regular um, inspection. And that's about $30 unless there's something wrong with your brakes or your tires, then you have to get that done. So it can be $30 for the inspection, but usually it ends up being more because there's something wrong, right? Um that would be about about it. Uh, sales tax. I actually learned yeah. this thing. Yeah, sales tax. Um, in Virginia, I was like, okay, it's between like, you know, because I lived here a long time, between five and a half, six percent. When I looked it up, the actual sales tax for Virginia is 4.3. And I was like, well, why have I always thought it was five and a half to six? Because in Virginia, they give each county or city the ability to add a certain amount up to 1.7%. So that is exactly what they have done in every city and county. So typically it's about six to seven. And I guess the, the county or city collects that extra amount that goes to them sort of thing, whatever. Um, so yeah, you are going to see that. Um, the only exceptions we ever see is maybe on like the back to school week um, when it's for clothing, um, for um, equipment that could potentially be seen as school equipment or any kind of school supplies. That is a tax-free weekend. They also have like tax-free weekends for energy efficient appliances throughout the year, little special things that it's tax-free, you know, but usually it's going to be about mm, 6% tacked on top of things. So welcome to Virginia. <laughs> right. Maryland's sales taxes is right at six mm -hmm. as well. Um, and it's a flat six. I, I've never noticed anything. Now, the only discount, they, we do a, a similar tax-free week. Um, but ours is a week, not just a weekend. That's like a week. Oh. In August, typically, yeah, where they're all um, like backpacks and school supplies and clothing, all that stuff's tax-free. But now they're putting limits on it. They got smart. And it, right. Up to $30. <laughs> they thought people were abusing the system. Yeah, right, so. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of uh, the other things here. Income taxes, you know, they're pretty high, um, but that goes with without saying, you know, Maryland, they love to tax you here. Um, I think it, the income tax rate is something like, oops, sorry about that. Uh, okay. it's roughly about 6% or um, on top of what you're already paying mm -hmm. uh, as well. So it, it does get quite cumbersome, but you know, the only break they give you besides that tax-free week on the school supplies is your groceries and it's your essential groceries that aren't taxed, meaning like your bread, your milk, your orange juice aren't taxed. Well, orange juice is even questionable, but if you go in and buy a Red Bull mm -hmm. or, um, I don't know, snack foods even. Right, right, right. They're going to they're going to tax that because it's like a, not a like a not food staple or something like right, that. Right. Yeah, like meat and chicken and and stuff um is going to be tax free. Well, then I think Virginia might have taken a little hint because I just saw something when I was looking up about the tax rate that they have just passed something for Virginia that they are lowering the uh, tax amount for more essential Grocery items. Yeah. Um, I think lowering it to 1.3%, but um, it was not at that before. Um, so everyone's like, why exactly would you tell us that? Because you're like, don't move to our states. No, beautiful states, a lot to offer. Um, just coming in with your eyes wide open, right? Well, yeah. And, and, and I don't want to go down this path here, but the other thing is like the political nature in our states, you have to be aware of that too. Yes. Um, right now, Maryland's run by a Republican governor um, and Larry Hogan's his name. And Larry's done a great job with Maryland. Um, traditionally, Maryland has been pretty much a very democratic state and voted that way, especially Baltimore City, um, even like counties like Prince George's County, which borders Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Um that's what you're typically going to see. So if you are um, a Republican or in very strong for like Republican beliefs, 
Maryland's not your state, or you're going to have to seriously adapt and live in one one of the outlying areas. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I, again, just like you said, just want to be transparent. Sure. Texas is probably a, a better state <laughs> if if that's what suits you. Uh, Maryland, we like to welcome everybody here. Yeah. And, um, and and include as many people as possible. So. Thank you for for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. No, it's it's all good. It's all it's, good. It's, it's good. Come come to the all inclusive states of Maryland or Virginia, whichever is best for you. And either Adam or myself will help you in yeah. our great areas that we've been talking about. So. Yeah, and um, you know our coverage area here um, for my team and I. We essentially service the Baltimore metro area. And my tagline that I use uh, is we service you from Baltimore down the bay to the beaches in Ocean City, Maryland. No matter where you are in Maryland, we got you covered. So um, please reach out to us. Give us a call. Um, I'll go ahead and we'll put my phone number down here in the show notes. Um, you can shoot us an email, info at relentlesshomegroup.com. And as always, check out our YouTube channel uh, where we have tons of information all about living here in the Baltimore metro area. But I love it. You. I love it. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys again for joining in us for another City versus City. And remember, leave everything better. Once again, if this is your first time to our channel and you want to learn everything there is to know about living in Richmond, Virginia, tap that like button, hit subscribe, and click that little bell so you're notified every time we release a new video.